Good morning, folks. It's May 10th. We're at another garage. This garage is about 930 square feet. I'm going to flip this camera around. I'll show you the details so you can see exactly what we're going to do today. Okay, so today we are going to terminate this floor at the upper joint right here. We have some ugly joints in the floor that we just can't seem to get away from. So we're going to be filling these joints. This also has the plastic zip strip in here. This is what I was talking about before. It's this little plastic strip in here to determine where the floor cracks. And you can see by looking down here, they're not straight, which is very common just because it's a little plastic strip there. So we're going to open those up the best we can. We're going to fill those with a polyurea joint filler and we are going to get at it. We need materials, so we are going to go to our website, ConcreteFloorSolutions.com. We are going to visit our online store. And we are going to go into Epoxy Floor Kits, right in the middle here. And these by far are the most popular kits we sell. We need two of these 500 square foot Epoxy Flake Floor Kits. Uh, we have 930 square foot to cover, so this will give us enough plus a little extra. So the base color epoxy, that's going to be the color of the primer and the intermediate coat. They would like dark gray. So we're going to go down to dark gray. The flake system, they would like B716, which is right here on the bottom right. So we're going to choose... B716, last on the list. Flake size is going to be quarter inch. And we are not doing the polyaspartic upgrade. So we need two of these kits. We're going to add it to the cart. Now we're going to go back to the job and we can see what we're going to do there. Okay, so we could not get our trailer in the driveway, which is typical for some of our residential work. So we had to push everything down the driveway to get into our work area. Um, so once we get our equipment in there, we're going to get started on the joints. Okay, so I'm just getting this saw ready. We're going to cut these joints open. And you see I have the blade set there. It's about three quarters of an inch deep. So we're going to run the blade down these joints to clean these out the best we can before we fill it with a polyurea joint filler. So that's what you're going to see us do now. And this is what they call an upcut saw. So this blade actually spins in this direction and it kicks the dust forward and it goes up through here and then into the uh, vacuum system. So normally it's a pretty dustless operation unless the floor is really rough. So we get set up, you can watch us do that. All right, so we start cutting our joints there. Now these joints were, were fairly jagged so we're trying to make the, the best of a straight line that we can out of these joints. Um, after I run the saw down them, there's still some areas that weren't accessible. So I'm going to use my hand grinder with a four and a half inch diamond straight cut wheel just to dress things up. So we go around, we cut out the rest of the plastic zip strip, get everything cleared out the best we can, and then we're going to be ready for a joint filler. Okay, so you saw we were messing around these joints for quite a while, which just seems to be what happens lately. But this joint here has that um, plastic zip strip in the bottom. Very hard to see. We ended up running the saw blade down there, and there was still some stuff caught in there. So I just needed to use that hand grinder and cut quite a bit just to get that, that plastic strip out. And that plastic strip... Of course, these are all chopped in pieces, so it's hard to see. These are about, I don't know, an inch, inch and a half deep. They put them in, and um, they have like a little T on the top of them. So after they, they tap them down into the wet concrete like this, they peel the top off and leave the strip inside the joint, which is what we had to cut out. The ironic thing is, is these had the zip strips in it, and then they have two expansion joints running the other way up the slab and they poured the concrete right over the black expansion joint which you're not supposed to do that it's supposed to be exposed so we cut that open we're going to fill all these joints with polyurea 
And then we're gonna grind the whole floor and we're gonna get ready to coat. We do have some cracks we have to fix right there also. All right, so I always sit on a wheeled chair when we do this. It just makes it much easier to fill these joints. So uh, I'm rolling around. Jeff is getting the tubes ready as I'm filling with the uh, our DeWalt gun that we have uh, for the dual cartridges. So we're just filling all these joints with the polyurea. As soon as we get done with these joints, then I'm going to repair those. Uh, there's a couple small cracks right in front of the garage doors that need to be repaired with the CFS 343. Okay, so now we are done with the joints. I'm going to round, run around, top them off a little bit, just some areas that drain down. Now we're going to go to these cracks. So this is the CFS 343. Mix that up in a ketchup bottle. I have another crack right next door there that I'm doing quick. So just top those off a couple times until it holds. It sets in about 15 minutes, so it's a very quick repair process. And I'm putting some sand outside there because I have to grind that off. And then we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, so I just wanted to show a close-up of what we did here. Now we filled these joints with a polyurea joint filler, which I know they don't look very good now, but as part of the uh, process here, we shaved them smooth, and now we're going to run the grinder over everything to uh, make it all nice and smooth. A lot of these joints, by the way, are offset. I, it's kind of hard to see here, but this is like um, an eighth of an inch higher than this, which that, this spot here isn't that bad. Over here, it's so bad I couldn't even get the razor here. This is almost a quarter inch high compared to this. So some of this I'm gonna have to hit with a hand grinder before we can run this grinder on it because uh, these diamonds aren't going to tolerate a quarter inch elevation difference. So these, by the way, are the 40 grit gold diamonds. Um, we have nine of them mounted on this grinder. This grinder weighs about 900 pounds. Um, so Jeff's getting set up now. We're going to grind the floor with that. I'm going to edge with the hand grinder, and then we're going to put the prime coat down today. diamond change we had the golds on here and uh, the golds were just tearing the floor apart so uh, two things are going to happen you're going to wear the diamonds out very prematurely and you're going to get so much dust you can't keep up with it now there's no airborne dust but you can see how heavy the dust piles are on the floor so it was just way too aggressive so we switched out we're going to keep going now Okay, we did remove the gold diamonds and we put the red 40 grit diamonds back on for slightly softer concrete. So I'm finishing grinding the edge and as I go along the front of the doors, you see a little bit of dust and that is because I can't keep the dust shroud flat on the floor when I'm doing the curved vertical edge right underneath the garage door. So that's why you see that, that little bit of dust there. So now we're done grinding, we're vacuuming everything up and we're getting ready for our prime coat. And we're going to do that right now. So now we have all smooth joints all over here. Um, I always talk about the scratch. Let's see if we can zoom in on the scratch here. That is the scratch we have. The other extremely important part is we're going to use a primer. You absolutely must use a primer when you're putting these floors down. If you don't, you're flirting with disaster. So we'll put a primer down today and tomorrow we're going to do the intermediate coat in the flakes. We just have to get our equipment out of the way here and then we're going to start coating. Okay, so we're just getting ready to coat here. We have our 24 inch squeegee, our 18 inch roller, we have our epoxy. Now we're using two 500 square foot kits that we sell on our website. Uh, this is dark gray epoxy. What it consists of 
and we got two of these, but each bucket has three gallons. It's two gallons of A and one gallon of B, which is inside the bucket in a plastic um, separating lid. So uh, we're gonna, today we're gonna put this primer down. That's 707 LVP, stands for low viscosity primer. Again, you always wanna use a primer. Tomorrow we're gonna do the 707, the CFS 707 dark gray, and then we're gonna throw our flakes in it. And then Wednesday we're gonna come back, we're gonna put the CFS 137 MUV, uh, which is a UV stable clear epoxy top coat on top of it with the aluminum oxide back rolled for texture. Okay, I mixed the 707 LVP for about two minutes, pour that out, squeegee it out. Jeff is doing some edging there with the brush and uh, I am doing the edging now and Jeff will start with the 18 inch roller. He is going perpendicular to the way I squeegeed and now he's going to finish back rolling across the whole floor and we're done for the day. Okay, we're back. Day number two. I'm standing on the prime coat. I'm wearing spikes, so you hear me clicking around on the floor here. I'm going to flip the camera around. I'll show you what the floor looks like after the prime coat. Okay, so again, this is the prime coat. This is a low viscosity material designed to penetrate into the concrete. And uh, basically, it seals the surface. It fights against uh, vapor rise and, and moisture and humidity and all that other stuff. But you'll see it's kind of patchy which is exactly what it's supposed to do. It penetrates into the concrete and seals the surface. So now our next coat we put on is going to be bonded to this material, which penetrates into the concrete. So you're not going to have a failure. Here's a little dry spot over here. You'll see it just soaked right in, which is what it's designed to do. So we'll mix up the CFS 707 dark gray We'll put our code out and then we're going to start broadcasting flakes. All right, so we're opening up our 707. That's the one gallon in top on the top of the bucket there. So we're going to pour the gallon of part B into the two gallons of part A. It's a three gallon mix. We get our edges really good. You always want to get your edges really good. So we're going to go around and round and we're going to pour it out parallel to the back wall, squeegee it out. That was one kit already, so I mix up the second kit. Pour that out, squeegee it out. We did the entire floor before we start flaking. So Jeff is now going to back roll again, perpendicular to the way I squeegeed. Now I'm going to start flaking. We do everything lightly and we gradually get heavier and heavier until we're good. We used about 20 pounds of the 30 pounds of flake we had. Okay, we are back. Day number three. We did our flake yesterday. Um, well, the CFS 707, I have dirt on my shirt already. Uh, the CFS 707, and we did the flakes. I'm gonna flip this around, I'll show you close up what we did. Okay, so the flake was the B716 yesterday, and we used about 20, 25 pounds of flake over this floor. It's 930 square feet, so we used two of our 500 square foot kits. So that would still leave you five extra pounds of flake, just to give you an idea of how much flake we used with this. I'll try to give you a close up here. So you can see the dark gray epoxy in the background is barely peeking through. So you can see our perimeters here. And this is what we got. So right now we are getting ready. We have our mixing station set up outside. We have our spike shoes. We have our six inch edge roller, our 24 inch squeegee, our 18 inch epoxy glide roller. And we are using, we have uh, six gallons of the CFS 137 MUV clear coat and we're going to put the aluminum oxide in that. So we're gonna set this up on time-lapse. I'll show you how we apply the clear coat and aluminum oxide. All right, so what I did wanna show really quick is the aluminum oxide. I have about, I don't know, a pint. This is the aluminum oxide we're gonna use. This is going to be plenty for the whole floor. So we're doing 930 square feet. This is plenty for the whole floor. 
So when you see me running around in time lapse throwing this on the floor, that's how much I'm putting down, just a pinch at a time, and I throw it up in the air. So just to show you. Okay, so I mix the CFS 137 MUV. I pour it along that back wall and squeegee across the floor. Jeff does the edges and he is going to begin to back roll perpendicular from the way I squeegee. And then a big gust of wind comes and blows all the leaves inside. So we close the door to finish the rest of the floor. Okay, so you know how every time we do one of these floors, there's some type of weather event that we have to deal with, whether it's rain, snow, whatever. Today was wind. And I'm gonna show you the little leaves that we just had a battle. We actually had to close all the doors halfway through the process, which I don't know if it's going to be on film yet or not, uh, but I'll show you what we're dealing with. So these are the little leaves that got airborne and blew inside the garage. There was a big gust of wind that came, just picked them all up and threw them right inside the door. So we closed the doors, finished everything up. I'm going to show you what it looks like on the inside now. Now it is very dark in here, so it's very hard to see, but that is our finished floor. And fortunately, they did not go underneath the doors or we would have had quite a challenge with plastic and these leaves. So that is the finished product. And the color option on this floor was the dark gray epoxy base colors and the B716 flake selection. So this is our finished product. This is what we started with. And this is the after picture. So once again, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate your support. If you like what you're watching, please hit the like button or subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.